War Eagle War Report family. I'm your host, C-Dub, and we have a lot to discuss today. Zach Etheridge is staying at Auburn. We also review Auburn's big win over Texas A&M while looking ahead to Vanderbilt this upcoming week. Also, we give our thoughts on the Super Bowl that's supposed to be happening later this Sunday. So, guys, definitely want to hang around for that. For now, sit back, get your weight up because your weekend tailgate starts right now. You are now listening to a war report. Weekend tailgate brought to you by University Ace Hardware. It's your boy. I jump. I jump. Be real. War Eagle, everyone. War Eagle. Happy Sunday. Happy Super Bowl Sunday. And welcome to the latest weekend tailgate brought to you by our good friends and show sponsor, University Ace Hardware. Guys, the best way to support us is by supporting the people who support our show. So if you're ever in the Auburn area, please be sure to start stop by 2101 East University Drive. Drop in and let them know that your friends from the War Report sent you also shout out to all of you guys who are watching us on a sunday watching us live or if you're watching us on replay do us a favor we need your help if you're on social media please be sure to share this video to your social medias facebook twitter helps use hashtag get your weight up let people find our content and let's grow our community now we got some great content coming your way this off season as well as the basketball season, you want to be a patron. And Mike G's here to tell you all about how you do that. Yeah. Well, first step is do that. Go to our page, find the join button, uh, select patron, and uh, become a member. We've got a lot of great content coming for you guys this offseason, January to July, keeping you guys engaged and informed this offseason. So Auburn is on a run in basketball. Uh, we're going to talk about the beatdown of Texas A&M yesterday, but we've, uh, we're bringing you guys highlights, uh, analysis, a lot of stuff. Become a patron. Help support this content, guys. We are part-time content creators working full-time hours. So your $5.99 helps uh, move us a little bit uh, closer to full-time content creators working full-time hours. We uh, appreciate the support. So uh, head on over, become a patron. We love you guys for that. We're partnering with the Lee County Humane Society to raise money for a good cause. So hashtag get your way up. Um, I'm sorry. Hashtag save all the puppies. That's a great way to get your weight up. Uh, but we're trying to save all the puppies with the U uh, Lee County Humane Society. 50 cents on every dollar donated goes to them to help them save all the puppies. Please help us. They're a real big part of the Auburn community doing great work, helping puppies find homes and helping uh, lost puppies get home. So great work that they're doing there. We're giving away a Lobtown hoodie in honor of the beatdown that we dealt the Aggies last night. So hashtag get your weight up here in the comments. This is sponsored by GWT2 Energy Consulting Services. That's our guy, Walt Taylor, in the comments. Hit him up for all your restaurant consulting needs. But hashtag get your weight up. Uh, Walt has been sponsoring these giveaways for quite some time. So I'll uh, show him some love. So he keeps doing it. We love Walt. You guys love him. We know it. So uh, we'll draw at the one hour mark. You got to be here to win. So make sure you stay tuned. If you don't win, you can always buy buy one to, uh, to support us. This is a great way to support our content. Head on over to thewarreport.com and uh, you can go to our merch store. Just hit the catalog button. And it'll show you a vast array of merch that you can purchase. Last but not least, guys, we're on podcast. So check us out on every single podcast platform. The War Report is there. We're slowly gaining momentum in the podcast realm. So if you miss this and you're in the car, you want to listen to The War Report, Weekend Tailgate, or Wednesday Night War Room, or any special live that we do, uh, we're putting it up on podcast. So uh, check there, subscribe, download, and leave us a review. Let them know The War Report is what you want to hear. Thank you, good sir. Uh, of course, it's the three of us. B is out today, but he should return on Wednesday. Fellas, I assume we're doing well after that big Auburn victory. But let's talk real quick about football, which has been heavy in the news as of late. Mm. Uh, some positive news we got. 
Starting yesterday, Zach Etheridge, who was rumored to be a leading candidate for the same position at Georgia, put out a tweet yesterday. Tweet reads, no time for division. United we stand. All in. Hashtag Wardam Eagle. Hashtag AU Family. Hashtag locked in Auburn football. So Zach is staying. And I, I, I perceive this guys to be a simple case of CYA. If this all fell apart and Harson got fired, Etheridge needed a place to land. And what better place than a place like Georgia where you can learn from really two good defensive minds in Kirby Smart and Will Muschamp, a guy who he played for when he was here at Auburn. So it was an op excellent opportunity for him. But even in the face of that, this tells me that this was a lot about his commitment to Harson um, and his vision and plan for the university he played for, university he loves. And once Harson was, uh, it was announced that he was staying. So did Zach Etheridge decide to stay? And Georgia is now looking elsewhere at other candidates. So just want to get you guys' opinions about it. Mike G, you you said a lot about the opportunity and how it hurts. Uh, I think you said it on Locked On. It hurts because this is a guy who's played for Auburn, who has the same love for Auburn as we do. Um, it hurts to see his name, uh, you know, in being mentioned for this job at Georgia. So for him to stay, what does that mean to you moving forward with Harson trying to build his culture at Auburn? Well, I think it's important to note that this was a coach that certain message boards personalities have been trying to sell that this is he's hard to work with. Right. Yeah. So if he's so hard to work with, why not make a move to the national champions, stay in conference, stay close to home? He's going to have to leave home at some point, guys. Let's, let's be real. He's going to leave home sure. at some point. He's sure. a talented coach, and he's a great recruiter. And there's no way we're going to be able to keep him long term. So as much as I love Zach Etheridge, he's going to have to spread his wings and fly and go someplace else at some point. But I also think it says – a lot about what he believes in what they're building here and the narrative inside that athletic department is not the narrative that's being pushed outside the athletic department by people who wanted you to believe that Harson was going to be gone. Now, I don't think it was rumor that he, I think a lot of the people perpetu perpetuating the idea that he was going to be gone were basing it on the idea that Harson was going to be gone. Because once you bring in a new staff, there's no guarantee the old staff is going to retain you, no matter how good you are. So the new coach might want to bring in his guys. And that's a terrible position to be in. Look what happened to T-Wheel last offseason. Right. Great coach, but he was just hanging in the balance, waiting on them to make a decision on his future. And I know for a fact he wanted to stay. If he had been offered the job at Auburn, he would have stayed. He was not given that opportunity, so he left. I think it worked out for him because he ended up getting a defensive coordinator position and a huge raise. But at the end of the day, I'm looking back on it. I'm just thinking, mm, this is a good thing for Auburn. This is a really good thing for Auburn. As much as being made of recruiting tactics, it definitely hurts. It helps you optically to keep one of your best recruiters on staff. Definitely. So this is this was a, I mean, we this week was a good week for Auburn. I, I don't I don't care what anybody says, you know, kept Harson, you know, we kept a lot of guys. Uh, the, the guys on the team all came out in support of, of Harson. I think Zach Etheridge staying is I think it represents the commitment that the people who chose to stay have to what they're building. And as long as they believe in it, man, I'm on board. Well said. Well said. I talk about what are your thoughts here the impact it has on recruiting because this is our recruiting coordinator so how how, how big was this um how big was this for auburn to to have zach tweet this and reaffirm his commitment to Auburn? uh i mean i think it's huge um i think the biggest thing is what mike was saying is it it helps to deflate the idea that the only people that coach harson can work with are the people who came with him from boise right like there was just this perpetuated idea that he was not good to work with unless you were part of the boise boys zach etheridge isn't one of those right 
Cadillac isn't one of those. In fact, people were going so far as to say that if Harson were retained, then both Zach and Caddy would be leaving. I've definitely seen people say that. Yeah, you're um, right. You're right. That was that was being pushed. Right. And so I just I just it's it, it, it's it had become so ridiculous with people saying things where it's just like, again, this is why I don't major in rumors. I just I'm, I'm not going to get caught up in a lot of this nonsense that people are trying to push as a narrative, um, you know, and I, I'm not going to get into some of the stuff that I've heard since then. And I'm just like, y'all didn't learn anything. You, le- you learned absolutely nothing over the past couple of weeks except for. Hold, hold, hold the line, whatever the narrative is, I'm going to stick. Well, this change, but this is still happening. It's like, OK. All right. I'm not going to say who you remind me of, but you, you definitely remind me of some people who were very wrong about some other things. Anyway, I don't want to get into that. All I want to say is, Zach Etheridge, we welcome you back or we welcome the fact that you did not uh, okay. decide to, to leave. Um, understanding him putting a feeler out there to say, hey, if my if I lose my job, do I have a place to land? There's I don't have any issue with him doing that. Right. Um, but glad that he is deciding to stick with Auburn. Because I do believe that they have a vision for what they want to accomplish with this current coaching staff um, and looking forward to seeing where it's going to go in the future. We still have a very big uh, recruiting season ahead of us for this upcoming season, and that is post spring uh, transfer portal. Uh, So that all those off the field staff people that they brought in for recruiting and all that are hard at work trying to figure out how they're going to land the next bit of talent to fill out this roster um, and looking forward to seeing what he comes up with in his new role as the director of recruiting. Facts. And I will add to that too, man, the content, you need continuity going into year two as much as possible. Um, Keeping him in, you know, we lose a lot with McCreary. We lose a lot with smoke. You want someone back there who has an understanding of those guys, know what they can do, close to those guys in age who can relate to those kids and coach them up to get the best out of them. I think we got a good one in Zach Etheridge. And so you don't want to lose that given what Auburn has to do in year two as well. So I I just think it's, it's definitely a huge uh, addition, man, a huge win for Harson um, just after retaining his job uh, with Auburn to go out and maintain your arguably your best recruiter on the staff. So I'm excited. I'm I'm looking forward to those guys getting to work. And uh, let's see what happens, man. Let's see yeah. what happens. I will say this. I'll add this about um, social media as it pertains to this whole Zach Efforts thing. I think this kind of underscores why you should just be careful what sources you get your information from. Yeah. And if you pay attention, it's easy to see the biases that people have when they're trying to push something as absolute truth. And I would say the only things that we push as absolute truth are things that can be factually proven beyond the shadow of a doubt. If they can't, then we just kind of say, hey, listen, this is how we feel and we'll see how it goes. But this is how we feel. And this thing with 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 Etheridge, I can only imagine he's reading about himself. He's going on Twitter. Right. And he's reading about himself and how he feels. And that he was he's not going to stay in that he's not on board and he feels like Harson is hard to work with, knowing that that's not true at all. Right. I think that's one of the reasons why he came out and made that video. You know, I I think that that's the messaging here is like messaging got out of control on social media and people's like message board rumor mongers were representing their narratives as these people's ideas and people just ran with it. I was in a Twitter space guys where they were saying, I know for a fact, (laughs) Harson wasn't at, was I listened to that Twitter space and Oh yeah, that's right. He was in there. Yo, I was like, what is this man talking about, bro? He was, I know for a fact that Harson was not at central Phoenix city. He said he wasn't at Central Phoenix City and he wasn't at some uh, awards banquet or something for Alabama. So I was just like, right, no, I was just like yo. This right. Is- and so I'm like, wait, but how do you? And I asked, I was like, but how do you know? And he was like, I know for blah, blah, blah. And I was like, okay. And then I started rewinding because my brother is actually the wrestling coach 
at Central Phoenix City where we both went to high school. And I'm like, he wasn't there because my brother sure as hell sent me a picture of him and Harson. And let me tell you, he said that Harson stopped and talked to him for about 10 minutes about like coaching philosophies. And he was very personable and none of the stuff that you hear about Harson. This Yo, is my brother. I have the picture in my phone. Of these right. Guys Your brother home. can corroborate that he was there. There's a picture with him and Patrick, Patrick Nix. Nix. And I'm just like, where are you getting this Isn't stuff this from? from? Now, yeah. you know, if you listen to the Twit people out there, you don't know what you're talking about, my G. So I don't care what's in your, your <laughs> phone. Then, your then some other dude <laughs> chimes in and he's like, he's like, what, what do you mean he wasn't at the thing? I was there. I have a picture of him with me and him. That not This isn't Central Phoenix City. This is mm -hmm. a whole other place where the dude said he wasn't there. And he's like, I have a picture of Coach Harson." And myself at that event, what are you talking about? And the dude, but he was so adamant that he was not at either of these places. He's like, oh, well, the only one I was sure about was the Georgia one. And I know for a fact he wasn't there. I'm like, well, how do we know that one is even true? Like, yeah, what are right. you talking, talking about? about? Dude, your credibility. And he was so is, is, adamant he was right. And then had to back. It's like, well, you know, I just I was making an assumption about the other ones because this one was true. So I just assumed I'm like, man, come on, bro. Like, y'all got to chill, man. But you but you were saying it with your chest like it was an absolute. And that oh, and he, he came in there like as a freaking thunderstorm. And he was just like, wait a minute. All of you guys in here loving Coach Harson. He's still awful for these reasons. He didn't do this. He's such so far behind in recruiting. He I was like, okay. And I'm listening. I'm listening. I'm listening. And I'm like, okay, that's not true because I've seen the Central Phoenix City picture with him and, and, and Patrick Nick. So I know that one isn't true. I just talked to Mike G the other day when he said his brother saw him there. Now, I can't confirm the other two. And then this other dude hops in. is like, wait a minute. That's not true. This thing. I was like, man, get this dude off the mic. Bro. Right. <laughs> what? Get this dude what? off the mic, bro. Think about how many people. We didn't have a ton of people. We had just probably like 250, 300 people in that Twitter space. But there were people in there, impressionable people who don't know how to source something like this. Right. That heard what he said. And they're going to repeat that to somebody. It is a a, a terrible version of the telephone game. And then before you know it, it's gotten out of control and people are just typing this stuff, trying to sound like they know what they're talking about on on Twitter or on a message board. To be a part of the conversation, this is the dangerous part of, I, you know, and I know this wasn't a topic, but I did want to talk about message board culture for a second. Like, message go for board it, go for it, Mike. Got, gotten completely out of control. Yeah, it's crazy. These it's, 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 it's and, disappointing, man. Yeah, and they're theorizing, behind, you know, in these echo chambers about whatever they think is going on. And if it sounds good to the next person, that's you know, that sounds logical. It is. Uh, it just it becomes truth in somebody's mind, right? And if you hear the same thing enough, the nature, human nature, guys, is the first story we hear is the truest. That's why everybody's so quick to get their narrative out there first, because people will hear that first and it becomes harder to disprove. Yeah. For most people who have already decided that the first thing they heard was true. Right. Right. I, yeah. I, I think I think if I don't believe, of course, we we scoff at the at the notion that that fans have negative impacts on the program and recruiting and whatnot. But the people who believe that this is their ammunition. What right. we see in these message boards, this is what they point to when when they see this behavior. And so they're not wrong in that it the behavior is just all driven in rumor and speculation. Right. Yeah. And again, people's perception can become reality. I don't believe that that has an ultimate impact on how we recruit kids or win games. But it is disappointing to see from a fan base that really needs to support who we have as a coach. And you can have your critiques and opinions because the best believe when the games start being played, we will definitely have our fair share of criticism for sure. But that's not based off speculation. Everyone is going to see what we saw on the field. We actually go back and do a review to take a closer look at what happened on the field, which further bolsters our opinion. Right. But let me tell you <laughs> something again, if you read these message boards, even the people who watch those film reviews come away with something completely different than what we actually said. 
Agreed. Yeah. Uh, I read on one, they were like, I stopped. I, their film reviews show their bias because they were talking about Kobe dropping a ball because it was thrown too hard. And I'm, I, that is a complete twist of what that conversation was. Yeah. You took one thing and then you take it you, completely out of context when we right. were talking about ball velocity. And all they heard was the quarterback throws the ball. They, the, the war report guys think that the quarterback throws the ball too hard. That's why receivers can catch it. What? That wasn't even a little bit of the conversation. Right. Maybe when you're standing six feet away from somebody, throwing the ball as hard as you can is not a great idea. <laughs> no matter how accurate it is. <laughs> that makes it harder. If I'm standing five feet from you, Caesar, I say toss me my keys and you wind up like Tim Hudson. We, we're fighting. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a break. This is kinda, common sense. <laughs> I kind of want to do that now. But, yeah, right. you, know? <laughs> you, throw, you throw my keys at me like a like John Smoltz from five feet away. <laughs> we're fighting. So you know, and that was more of the conversation. And then we had actual receivers come on. Uh, Devin Aroma Shudu and Ben Obamanu talked about, hey, well, you can look at the position of the receiver's hands and tell what he was expecting. He was expecting that ball on the body. So when he threw it as hard as he could, six feet out in front, that's a hard adjustment for a receiver. That was the conversation. Right. You know, or if you're going to throw any, and, and Chris Todd said it best. He said, listen, man, if you're going to put that ball uh, that far out in front, you just have to take something off it to physically give the receiver time to adjust. Yeah. And they took that and somehow – Turn it into we think that if a ball is thrown too hard, no receiver can catch it. That's the narrative that I read. I'm telling you, man, people only hear half the things you say, and then they misunderstand half of that. Right. That's what's happening on these message boards is somebody maybe even in Ernst is just talking about something that they heard. Hey, guys, I heard. And, he, and, and they're looking for somebody to honestly just confirm whether the thing they heard was true or not. And it's clear to me, if you already didn't like Harson, you're going to hear all the bad things that people say about him. As Confirmation true. bias. Yeah. Which was crazy. Yeah. Now, this this is not me saying that Harson had no, like, I do think he needed a PR makeover. I, I think he could have made himself more personable and more accessible. And there are things about this job that it was clear, you know, he needs a better attitude toward the media. Not that he's like mean to the media, you know what I mean? But he just needs a better attitude toward the media. You, you Because during times like these, you need people who know something about you, who have a connection to you. Maybe not like super personally, but, you know, if I feel like I know something about you, it's hard for me to throw you under the bus. For the people who have met us, even. Well, use a war report, for example. Some of you have met us personally. Right. And so when you read negative things about us on social media, it's not just those podcast guys. It's Mike, it's Isaac, it's B-Will, it's Caesar. And it's harder to hear negative stuff about people who you've met and know personally than it is just some podcast guys that you watch on YouTube. That's the nature of relationships. That's what I hope he took away from this is you can dispel a lot of this by just showing people more of who you are. Bruce Pearl did it. Yeah. Let somebody try to perpetuate a lie about Bruce Pearl being hard to work with. You can't because publicly what's out there is he is the most personable guy ever. He works just as hard as Brian Harson. He's just as focused on X's and O's and he demands excellence out of his players as well, too. But he's let you see a side of him that people can connect to. God, did you guys see Bruce in tears? During the basketball game, when they were talking about the outlive, and shout yeah. out to my girl, uh, uh, uh Nicole Sheeg, she is super Auburn fan and alumni. She lives here in the DC area, and she's bad. She was on Bruce's um sheet that he was holding up, currently battling stage four cancer. Her and I communicate a couple times a week, and it, I just thought it was, it was, she, she's on his, on his outlive board. And I just think, like, what a great moment, you know, as the Auburn family. Harson needs some of that, man. He just needs a little bit more humanity to get past it with some of these people 
that are just so ready to throw him under the bus at every turn. And he's not getting the benefit of the doubt that Zach Edred, Etheridge would get as a former Auburn guy or Cadillac. Right. 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 So you just got work to do in that area. I would just, man, we, you know, it is a shout out to everybody who has heard or seen somebody perpetuating some of this foolishness and actually physically spoken up and said something. And, and, and I think that's what it's going to take. It's going to take more of us speaking up and saying, hey, you can't prove that. Stop spreading that because somebody's going to believe you. Right. And you need to, people need to do a better job of distinguishing between what they think and not making up these fantastical realities in their head and then claiming it as fact. It's really hurting us. Yeah. There was one innocent one on social media, Caesar, that I saw this morning where it was some girls in the background staring at Brian Harson and, and they posted the pictures. I wonder what these girls were thinking. Oh, God. And it was just a really weird moment. But I... <laughs> I responded to the post. I was like, can we not do this after what just happened? Because, you know, something as simple as that will turn into a rumor. That's that's social media these days. If you love Auburn and, and it was it, I know she thought it was an honest joke, but I just didn't think it was. I was like, you know, bad timing for this joke. Because somebody's going to take this and start a whole nother thing. Trust me. I just want us to move past this. Uh, Etheridge is staying. I think that his, I think that him staying says a lot about what, who Harson is as a coach. And the rest of us just need to see what, what, what Zach sees right. in Harson rather than taking a job at, at, at a rival school, probably a little bit more money. And, you know, the notoriety, you get to work with a national championship winning staff. There, there are a lot of compelling professional reasons to take that job. For sure. He chose to stay. I don't I don't think that can be just brushed under the rug as something that's insignificant. My if, you, if you're going to focus on Mason leaving, factor in Etheridge staying as well. Right. That's it. Factor that in. Factor that into your talking points and reevaluate your position after that. It's, it, it, it's just as... It's I view the players that left versus the players who stayed in the same light. I cannot look at the players that left without factoring the players who have been eff effusive in their praise for Harson and chose to stay. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. I don't think you can judge one without considering the other. That's all. Well, listen, we're uh, unless I got anything else, we can move to the we can move to basketball and uh talk about talk about the goodness that happened yesterday but yes zach etheridge is indeed staying and before we get to the the uh the break let's get to some of these super chats walt the only only thing good out of central was james joseph <laughs> open like a bulldogs just joking mike Bruh. g Bruh. <laughs> Opa like a uh -oh. Opa like it wouldn't even be a thing without auburn like it was just this thing that just kind of hangs on the side of auburn <laughs> you know, y'all, y'all, y'all take that offline and uh, okay. y'all bickering that way. Okay. Oh, All right. <laughs> John Brandon, good to have you on, buddy. Big thank you and respect to the War Report crew. Y'all always bring reason, sophistication, and logic to the conversation. War Eagle guys, War Eagle back at you, man. We try. We try. We just, I, I think one of the best stands, and I remember Ike doing this even, even last year when it came to recruiting. Uh, people would always ask us, hey, are we going to get this guy? And we're like, listen, we react to news. We react to when these kids, then the university announces this kid is signing. We got this kid. That's when we can talk about it because we know these situations are incredibly fluid. It can be it could actually be heading in one direction in one moment. And then the next day, it's a complete opposite of what was reported. And people hold you, as we see in the comments. People are holding people to things that you've you've said and confirmed. And so why not confirm the truth when it's announced by the university? You're always on the positive end doing it that way. So that's always been our stance and uh, it's gotten us this far and I uh, kind of like what we're doing. So we're going to continue to do just that. And thank to, thanks to you guys for for your support in that regard. Guys, get the thumbs up. If you haven't been commenting, but you've been watching do us a favor, reach over. No one even has to know you're doing it. Hit the like button, guys. Get the thumbs up. It helps us with our engagement, and we greatly appreciate it. 
We're going to take time to uh, acknowledge the sponsors of The War Report. The War Report's weekend tailgate show is brought to you by our generous sponsors. University Ace Hardware, located at 2101 East University Drive in Auburn, Alabama, right across the street from the Auburn Mall and next to the movie theater. For all of your hardware needs, Ace is the place. AuburnSports.com. For news and notes on all things Auburn sports, head over to AuburnSports.com. And our giveaway sponsor, GWT2 Energy. If you want the best in the business at restaurant logistics, check out our friends at GWT2Energy.com. Hey, become a patron. Uh, this is a great way to support our content. Uh, head on over to our YouTube channel, find that join button, uh, help the War Report grow. Uh, I said it at the top of the broadcast. We are full-time content creators or part-time content creators working full-time hours. So you guys can help us become full-time content creators working full-time hours by becoming a patron. Just $5.99 a month. Uh, we price this this way for a reason uh, so that uh, this is something that most people can do and uh, something that hopefully you never have to reconsider. Uh, and if we can get enough of the community to get in on this, we can bring you guys everything. So we're always looking for ways to bring you guys more content. Uh, become a patron. Help us get there. We appreciate everybody who's going to go do this. We are partnered with the Lee County Humane Society to raise money for a good cause. So um, head on over to the About section of our YouTube channel. You'll find a link to this fundraiser. 50 cents on every dollar goes to the Lee County Humane Society to help them hashtag save all the puppies. Uh, we appreciate you guys for doing this. They're a big part of the Auburn community and the Auburn family. And they're doing really good work to help find puppies homes and get lost puppies home so important work that they're doing we want to help support them thank you for helping us with that we're giving away a hoodie hashtag get your weight up in the comments this is brought to you by gwt2 energy consulting services uh this lot these lob town hoodies are hot right now i've been seeing the pictures on social media ike um is the one that comes up with all this stuff he's the only one of us witty enough to come up with things like this to use the a and the u in ways that sound right so uh you want to get this hoodie uh <laughs> it's uh the, the pictures have been really really hot on social media i appreciate everybody who's been wearing them uh you, you got to be here at the end to win so make sure you stick around to the end of the broadcast if you don't win you can buy one the warreport.com will take you right to our merch store hit the catalog button and just head on in there and take a look at all the gear that we have there we got some good stuff in there last but not least we're on podcast check us out on every single podcast platform that's apple spotify soundcloud amazon podcasts we're everywhere uh we're slowly putting out more podcast content every week so subscribe, download, leave us a five-star review so that we can continue to jump up those podcast charts and, and, and hopefully bring you more content in that form. And there will be some unique content that we put out in that form as well. So podcast-only content will be a thing in the future. Indeed, indeed. Well, guys, let's, let's get back into it by discussing basketball. It was a good day yesterday. Auburn basketball redeems itself after a road loss to Arkansas earlier in the week. Came back and cruised a victory over AM, beating them 75 58. Uh, Auburn moves to 23 and 2. They improved to 23 and 2, 10 and 1 in the SEC for the season. Uh, it's likely that Auburn's three-week run as the number one team in the nation will likely come the week after and come to an end after splitting uh, last week's two games, going one and one. But I expect Auburn to be somewhere in the top five, maybe even top three. Who knows? We will definitely see once the rankings are released on Monday. But speaking of what's being released, you guys have voted. I was curious to see who you guys is going to go with. But it's obvious. Who's the player of the game, IG? Yay, big sexy Walker Kessler. I called it on facts and all. I tried to tell y'all this would be a triple double night. I said it. I said he's gonna do it during Texas AM 100 percent That's exactly why I said word for word. And it came to pass 12 points on five for 17 shooting, 11 rebounds, one assist, 12 blocks, and 24 minutes. That's insane. Right. That's so insane. somebody said, I think it was Justin Hokinson that said every minute 
of that game or every two minutes of that game or something like that, Walker Kessler was getting either a point, a block, or a rebound, which is insane to think about. Great game by him. He's my – guys, no disrespect to uh, Wendell Green or KD or even Jabari Smith, but Walker Kessler is definitely my favorite player on this team this year. You keep you keep going back and forth. Uh, are you selling on Walker Kessler? Because it was Wendell earlier in the year. You yeah. like KD season started. Now now you now you're on Walker. Now, uh, yeah. Is like, it Walker listen, Kessler? I was, listen, Ike Ike sold me on KD's style of play because I was I was kind of sour on KD. And then oh, know, let, let me correct something. Somebody and just he, and that Kessler out. That's was just, five or seven. Yes, yeah, five or seven. Oh, that's five a typo. Seven. Yeah. yeah, okay, five or seventeen. Yeah, because that's not a good day shooting. Yeah. <laughs> um, especially for him, because those are like all at the rim. Um, but I I I kind of brought me around on the type of player that KD is. And what he did the other night was kind of like why I was a little sour on KD. But uh Wendell Green stepped in there and just kind of showed me I just didn't know what to expect from him. And Walker Kessler, like, God, you know, we, I mean, just uh, his game is, has rounded out. He's shooting threes. He rebounds like a monster. He had a spin move in the post for a yeah. dunk that was yeah. beautiful yesterday. It was nice. He had a couple of nice spin uh, post spins Woo. that were yesterday. So, yeah, you know, I mean, I just love his game. He blocks, he goes straight up on most blocks and and he's just a tower and it, it's not even just the blocks if you count the amount of shots he alters in the paint mm -hmm. his effect on the game is crazy right. so when you run into that paint and you know you got to put up a circus shot because you've got the empire state building looming over you to block every shot it's it's nuts. He's he's definitely my favorite player on the team. I, I think we are very lucky to get a guy like him. He affects the game in so many different ways, and I think that's what makes sure. him such an amazing player. Um, Cam, you're asking who who in the hell is the number one shot block? It is Kessler. Kessler was number two for a while. Uh, I think it was a forward or center for Western Kentucky. I, his name escapes me right now, who was number one for a while. But Kessler passed him maybe like a week or two ago, and I think he's all but extending – uh his his uh his lead at this point we did a facts and all and i said that kessler was going to be the number one leading shot blocker just by virtue of the fact that auburn is doing so well as a team western kentucky i'm not sure if they're going to make it to the tournament mm -hmm. um because they've lost a lot of games so that's those are more opportunities for kessler to just extend his lead in blocking shots and with games like a 12 block game like yesterday it's all but expected for him to end up being the leading shot blocker. So Jam Jamarian Sharp. Jamarian Sharp. Yeah. yeah. And he's Appreciate got that. 111 blocks. Kessler is sitting on 116 right now. Yeah. So he Kessler's slowly starting to pull away from that guy. So uh I expect it to be Kessler. My question for you guys is this. Is Walker Kessler this year's Naismith defensive player of the year, in your opinion? Ooh. Yikes. Take, your time. Um, Take your time. This would be a great facts in our question, but I, I want to yeah, I want to ask with the whole community. Question. Is it easier to block the ball than it is to steal it? I think. He uh, is. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's I, he if he impacts the game so much on the defensive end. I don't know how you say he's not like he's just I mean, he, he's he's a good on ball defender um, when he has to defend people in the post. He mm -hmm. defends fairly well off the ball. I mean, it is really well in space, that, too. Yeah, his shot blocks take say say it for themselves. Shot altering. Um, yeah, because that's not something that goes down well. in the stat books. Yeah, I just right. I don't I right. don't know how anyone impacts a game more on the defensive end in college basketball than Walker Kessler right now. Defensive rebounding, like he just, yeah, I, I would have to say yes. Um, if he's not at least a finalist, somebody. Just uh, that, that is that they must be. What's the the idiot's name that keeps putting us like at number seven on his? Uh, well, uh, Wilner. It's either Wilner uh, or, or Newell. Newell, yeah. Jesse Newell. Then Jesse it's, Newell. It's a bunch of Jesse Newells out there voting if he's not. Jesse's so. probably gonna have us fifteenth after last week. Um. So yeah, I I, I will be I will be surprised. I, I have him at at the very least a finalist. I think it'll be robbery if he's not a finalist. Yeah. But uh yeah, we can we can 
little question I thought to ask. I was just curious to see kind of kind of where you thinking he may land because the the way the way he's affected the game, like you see it, like guys do not come into the paint with any type of confidence when he's in the game. Right. And so it's 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 amazing. I was just impressed why the most impressive block to me last week was against Arkansas, where that guy had a, what looked like to be a clear dunk. Um, Yo, and yeah. Walker came from the free throw line to block his shot. Like yeah, that's he tried that's to put just, him on poster. He tried yeah. to put him on poster. So mm. I, I'm I'm in, I'm impressed. I'm impressed with him. Like I said, I'd be surprised if he's not a finalist. But we'll see. You know, you know what bolsters his resume is not only. The, the stat sheet, but you guys know if, if you're going for MVP of anything, it helps if your efforts are resulting in wins. Yeah. Yeah. If, if the team you're playing for is up at the top, then you automatically, because listen, nobody, the, the, the announcers at the games are effusive in Walker Kessler praise. Like yeah, they can't sure. get enough of praising Walker Kessler. And if Auburn is a 10 win basketball team right now they might talk about him but it's like it's it's almost as, the, as if they're trying to sell the narrative that he deserves a bunch of credit uh, but again it's 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 not going to be this like he could be the guy at western kentucky right now and nobody knows who he is because he's on a team that's not playing for anything for real and they're not winning a bunch Facts, so i had to google him. <laughs> the guy at western right. kentucky may end up you know, maybe he'll get the most shot blocks in the in in the season, right? But do his shot blocks result in a team that will win over twenty five games in the season easily? Right. No. Right. It's not right. going to happen. Is that team going to make a run for a national championship? Not going to happen. So right. Walker Kessler wins automatically over him. Now, who are some other on ball defenders who are just, you know. Zip Jasper like in their ability to harass people as they come down the floor. There may be some of those out there. I don't know. Mm. Um, but man, it's hard to argue against him. And uh, you know, uh, he the has only a reason I'm not, too. Yeah. The, the only reason I'm not like, yes, absolutely, is because you know, I, I'm gonna be honest again, I don't watch a ton of basketball outside of Auburn basketball. So it's not like I see some other guy being this dominant defensive force that I watch Walker Kessler do now for what 20 five games right um so it's difficult for me to to um to say anything like a definitive like oh there's nobody better it's like i don't really know i hadn't been watching but, but that's the media bias that exists right when you watch a guy play sure. on tv over and over and over and over again yeah he's gonna be the first name that comes up in your head for sure for um, sure so for sure yeah. i mean and again the the way they talk about him he has an his story is great Right. Yeah, he comes from a family of ball players at Georgia. He transferred out of North Carolina after not doing much to Auburn, a place where you wouldn't expect him to even have the type of year he's having. And it, he just has the storyline because, again, they talk about this all the time when they cover him during the Auburn game. So to Ike's point, you know a lot about this guy and he's in your he's in your mind when you start thinking of defensive players because he's had the most exposure. Yeah. Uh, Lisa Wise, want to get to yours real quick. Appreciate you. We're glad moving forward, but I would have preferred a press conference validating commitment to Harson. Just seems like the right way to do it. What are you guys' thoughts on this? Yeah, one hundred percent. I think they should I mean, come out and I, made a statement. It was too. I would. I would have liked story. it. I would have liked it, but um, because the actual Auburn administration was never vocal to begin with, them handling it silently was just kind of par for the course. Had they come out and had some big to do other than a statement that they released, um, then I would have expected the same in the re in, in the reciprocal. But they put out a statement saying, hey, we're going to look into it. They put out a number statement saying ah, there's nothing to it. And I don't I don't really have a problem. To, I would have liked to see it again, um, but I don't feel any way that they didn't do it because that's just kind of how they've been handling it from the beginning. It's just like, hey, we'll release a statement so you guys know we're taking it seriously. We're going to release another statement to say we're done looking at it. Right. Yeah. Because, because it became, became a national story, that's why I would have preferred the, the press conference. And I think it would have helped him. You know, you talk about the negative effects on recruiting. I mean, I thought I think it would have helped him if they had come out and did something that people cannot ignore and can't miss to make sure that the messaging so he can point back to that and be like, hey, listen, that was never really a thing. Ryan Harson getting fired from Auburn was never really a thing. It was. Uh, you know, uh, uh, machination of people who have too much time on their hands and like spreading rumors. I'm going to be here. I'm the coach. 
I think it would have helped to a degree. But then again, I think a lot of people who want to believe that Harson was this close to being gone would have filed that away up under the vote of confidence by the administration. And he's likely to be gone soon. Like, I just think you want to, you're going to believe what you want to believe at this point. And so I, while I think it would help some, I don't think it completely removes whatever people were already thinking and feeling to begin with. Uh, Walt Taylor says, it'll be cool to know what Walker says to the refs. He's always asking questions and getting clarification. Yeah, he is very, you know, most defensive players have a sort of edge to them to where when they get those calls, they're like almost have to be reeled back in um, by going at the refs. But he is very polite uh, with the refs because I personally think some of those calls, I think he's getting the, he's getting almost a shack treatment to a degree because of how intimidating he is down low that he's getting some calls he perhaps shouldn't. I was not a fan of one call in the game where I think the player from AM traveled, mm -hmm. charged KD, mm -hmm. and then ran into Walker Kessler, and then Walker Kessler gets called for the foul. Like yeah, that, I'm like that, that that entire sequence was it was a mess. <laughs> yeah, right. it, was, it was a complete mess. He could he he 100 percent traveled, he 100 percent pushed off on KD, and then he went like that's I was having this conversation with someone in our comment section about Walker Kessler. They were upset um, that Walker Kessler didn't foul out earlier in the Arkansas game because they, they said he just he was mauling people out there the entire game and he deserved a bunch more fouls than what he got. And I was like, OK, let's say you're right. You're wrong, but let's say you're right. Then are you going to then say the refs were incorrect in giving Walker Kessler fouls in situations where the offensive player initiated the contact, right? So if Walker Kessler jumps straight up and down, the offensive player either jumps into him or to avoid getting a shot block, pushes off with his off arm to create the contact and Walter Kessler gets the foul call. That's wrong. It's either a no call or it's an offensive foul. That's how that works. If I jump straight mm -hmm. up because I'm here I have the right to this space. You can't jump into me and then try to bounce off to get the contact and you can't push off with your off arm. Those are all offensive fouls or they are no calls play on, right? It's right. not a defensive foul in that scenario at all. So like you can't just acknowledge, and this is the thing I, I, I always hate when people say the refs lost us this game. The refs do a pretty crappy job all the way around and it can definitely be imbalanced in a lot of situations. But usually you can see enough calls go in the opposite direction that should have gone in your direction or mm -hmm. calls that went in your direction that should have gone the other way to say, okay, let's watch the refs out. It was bad both ways. Let's talk about what actually happened during the game, right? Yeah. So the refs don't necessarily win and lose games unless you don't call a double dribble in a pivotal point um, in the uh, final four. Don't want to go into that too much. Uh, but, my point to say all of that is Walker Kessler gets a lot of foul calls in scenarios where he did not foul anyone. Yeah. And it is ridiculous. He would have at least 10 to 15 more blocks this season if they weren't called fouls when he actually got it with the ball clean. Not only not fouled anybody, but didn't even touch anybody. Yeah. Right? Like there were yeah. a lot of calls where people drive in on him and he alters the shot. He doesn't get into their body like none of it. And then there's a foul right. call. Right. And it's very frustrating to watch because it just seems like at the end of the game, you know, even versus Texas A&M, I think he ended with four personal fouls. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was about to foul out of that game. Right. And in the tournament, when it's tight, if they call it like that, it's just going to be very, very, it's going to, it's going to suck, man, to be yeah. worried about whether your most impactful player is going to foul out of the game. What's frustrating to me with it is that it seems like to, to to Ike's point, they get it right with KD. Now, KD drives to the basket trying to initiate contact, and they, for the most part, they just let it play on. They right. don't call an offensive foul. But then you go back down to the other end of the court, you call it on Walker Kessler. I'm like, yeah. okay, guys, if you're going, if if they're going to get the call, KD should get that call, or mm -hmm. they shouldn't get the call either. Right. Right. Because it's the exact same thing. It's, so. it's literally the exact same thing. The only difference, I think, in KD's case is that because he's going 800 miles per hour, it looks like a worse collision, but it's the right. same exact play. It's an offensive player throwing their body into a defensive player to generate contact in hopes to get a foul call. And it works against Walker Kessler and it does not work for KD a lot of the time. A lot of times, KD doesn't get that call. The times he does get the call, usually they did foul him, right? But he, 
initiated like he went in there seeking that contact right he's right. like all right cool well if you go if you come in anyway then i might as well brace for impact and you gonna you're gonna catch a little bit of this too so um right. It is what it is, but it's it's definitely he is he's difficult to officiate, um, it seems, because he's so disruptive. And it's almost like, man, like, can I get a shot off without this dude blocking it? The answer is probably no. But that's not that doesn't mean you have to call a foul on him in situations right. where it's, it's not like, like he's oh, doing something illegal. It has has the officiating been particularly terrible this year? No, I'm not talking about just on on Auburn. I'm talking about. No, it's not particularly SEC. terrible. It's just it's, it's, been it's bad, it, right? It, it, it's, it's just what it's it is. been awful for a long time. And Everything. B's been champ. B's been championing that for a minute. Yeah. yeah, I mean, they need to send them to a retreat or a workshop. Or but to be fair, so listen. So when I was at Auburn, <laughs> um, it out, bro. when I was at a Auburn, zebra, a zebra of, retreat. <laughs> part of what I did was for intramural basketball. I co I coached the girls' intramural basketball team when I was at Auburn. I also refed games. Refing basketball games is hard, bro. Like it's hard. It's really yeah. easy to do it from your like couch watching it on TV, but like when you're there live in the game, there's so much stuff you have to pay attention to and it really sure. is about the communication of a team of refs understanding where I am on the court and what I'm supposed to be watching. Like they don't call 3 seconds almost at all anymore in college basketball like you can camp out in the paint uh, offensively and then not get called I, mean, I, I meant to look up the other day do they even still have this as a rule that you can't because i just i've seen people just camp out in there anyway um but like it's really hard because yeah. there's so much you have to pay attention to and sometimes like you hear those late whistles where it's like yo like the the play is almost over with and then you finally it's 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 a reaction thing it's like oh shoot wait i should have blown my whistle and in your mind you're thinking that's a foul but like you can't just in your head say, oh, that's a foul. You got to blow the whistle. You got to make it's 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 a lot. So it definitely is one of those things that officials. It's like anything else. You really need to practice and you really need to like get reps in like, OK, somebody's going to actively go do this thing. Make the call. Is it a foul or is it a block? It's a charge or a block. Right. Quick, quick, quick. Do it right. And it doesn't need to be game time when you're practicing that stuff. So, like, during the offseason, those refs definitely need to figure out a way to train better, to prepare themselves, and not just looking at instances on tape, but let's go physically map, map this out, just like you would for a football team. Like, okay, great. You saw it on tape. Now go run the route. Right. What does it look like? What does the ball look like when it's coming off the quarterback's hand when you're running this five-yard out route? So you can, like, it's got to be more than tape that allows you to prepare. For yeah, that. you know what's interesting? One, um, I know you've got uh, a lot of people watching probably don't know what I do for a living outside of the war report, but um, we, I work for an audio visual solutions company and we handle technology for businesses that come into meetings, uh, into hotels to put on conferences or meetings. Uh, one year when I was living in Phoenix, this was God, 2008, I think uh, the all-star game was in Phoenix. And um, my best friend came out just to be there. I saw a bunch of like former Auburn players there in Phoenix and Scottsdale for, you know, all-star festivities. The NBA was hosting a meeting with us and we set up all these money. It was every NBA general manager, the, uh, the players uh, association rep at the time was Derek Fisher. Mm -hmm. And then it was the head of officiating and two of his cronies. And they were voting on rules to basketball. This is hands down the coolest meeting I've ever sat in. So they had, they uh, to Ike's point, they pulled up a bunch of plays on Shaq. And th they were talking about how th he gets fouled a lot. And it's just not called because he's so strong. And they would go play after play. And they're like, on any other player, that's a foul. But... He's not getting the call just because it's so hard to move him. He doesn't look bothered by a lot of the contact that he takes, but it's still a foul. And what Ike is talking about, there's so much in basketball in terms of officiating that sub it's subjective. Right. Yes. Like, you know, I mean, based yeah, on what you're officiating seeing. is 100%. It's like a judgment call. Mm -hmm. Was that a violation or not? Right. Yes, it is. Right. Well, it is a violation, but who's at fault here? Like, and you have to make that decision so fast. In football, there's less of it, but you know, yeah, pass, pass interference is probably the most subjective call 
in football. And now targeting. Right. Yes. It is. Yes. Hard because you sure. have to, you know, there's so there's nuance to that call and it's hard to get right, which is why they made pass interference reviewable. Because right. in the moment, things are happening so fast. So it was just interesting to see that they had to have a whole meeting where they got every general manager in the NBA there to talk about, hey, how do we want these games to be officiated? Right. What is actually a foul? They were also talking about hand checking. Hand checking was like a real big thing at the time. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, some players were, were they were they, they were getting they were slick about how they hand check. What is a hand check and what is not a hand check? So a lot of time gets spent just trying to just get everybody on the same page about what the call is. And but all the referees in the NBA weren't at that meeting. Only the head guy was. So he's got to come away from that meeting with a clear understanding of what a foul is on Shaq. And then every other NBA ref that's going to ref his games has to understand that. Right. And it's difficult. So, you know, they need to put, I just feel like they need to put some more resources into training for refs. We've got the technology. We were still using DVD players back then, guys. And so they had this really cool DVD player with this, like, it had, there were barcodes on the sheet. Right. And it had a bunch of uh, uh, plays on this DVD. And when you scan the barcode, it would go to that exact play on the DVD. And I thought that was cool at the time. Um, now that <laughs> now that's that's not it's not groundbreaking technology now. But um, I was thinking to myself, they they did. I mean, it was very organized and they realized that it was a problem. You know, he is one of our premier players. And he's not getting a fair shake in terms of officiating, and we have to fix it, or it it it, it waters down our product. Right. So they need to put some resources into this, man. You cannot have guys like Walker Kessler in conference. If you're the SEC, right, you've got the best defender in the country in your conference. And he's not getting a fair shake because officials are unclear that he's not fouling people. And then right. they're calling it a foul. That's a problem. Some right. players warrant more attention. And Shaq changed the way that, you know, big men got officiated. For sure. Because there was nothing like him before that. I can't remember. I mean, name me a center in the SEC that has been as dominant as Walker Kessler has this season over the last 10 years. Maybe uh, one last 10 year. I don't know. I have to think about that for Ooh, a second. Hard chat, jump in on this. <laughs> Didn't yeah, so, LSU LSU had a guy name that went to the one. NBA? I can't even think of his name though. It has been this dominant. Not a center. Ben Simmons was there. Triple doubles recently. with blocks. It was even before Ben Simmons. Mm -hmm. Um, but anyway, yeah. But um, before we get before we get to the, the the giveaway, someone someone mentioned it in the, I think it was Chris Ray. He asked about uh, Flanagan. Um, yeah, definitely. How you feel? How you feel? Flanagan. How you feel about Flanny, man? Go ahead. I what's your what's your thoughts on Flanagan? Um, he was he was good yesterday. Um, wasn't great. You know, he still showed what I liked about what Alan Flanagan did yesterday was. When the ball was swung to him, he wasn't hesitant to just go ahead and shoot it, right? Whether he was making it or not, he made, I don't know how many three-pointers he made yesterday, but. Um, just one. So, but he took them without hesitation. And that's really what he needs to do. A lot of times he would catch the ball and he'd do a bunch of this. And then he'd like, you know, it's like, just listen, just swing, catch and shoot, right? Um, or catch it and make your move immediately decide like, but it seems like he's halt between those two spaces of do I drive or do I, you know, kick it or, you know, ro rotate, whatever. Um, he just seemed like he had a little bit more confidence in, in how he was moving. Um, and so I appreciated what Alan Flanagan brought to that game yesterday because, uh, you know, early in the game, you know, he scored the first four points for Auburn, but earlier in that game, nobody was playing particularly well offensively for either team. Mm -hmm. Right. And, uh, and, and Alan Flanagan was one of the few people who looked competent out there offensively. And I was like, well, look at this, this man woke up a little bit. Right. So if he can provide 
It doesn't even have to be 16 points, which is, I think, what he scored this game. It doesn't have to be 16 points again. Um, but if he can provide that level of uh, confidence in his offensive game, it becomes a problem. It becomes a problem for other teams to defend because a confident Allen Flanagan, even if he's not making buckets, puts pressure on defenses to have to guard him differently. Sure. So I sure. liked what he was doing yesterday from just a confidence standpoint. So hopefully he will continue to grow in that confidence and that will start to pay dividends towards what his point total is going to be or his his um the touches that he gets being more fruitful. So looking forward to it. Yeah. I was impressed. I Go ahead, Mike. I will say uh he led all scores. He did. He led all scores yesterday. I uh, was not expecting that uh because of the Jazzy challenge. Um really <laughs> wanted it to be Walker. Thought it was going to be him for a second. It was not. Well, uh, but he did it was a quiet it was kind of a quiet performance from Flanagan, right? It felt like he just kind of sneakily had a much better game than he has been having and uh, you know, Achilles injuries are really tough injuries to come back from. You know, uh, Kobe Bryant had this injury. You can say what you want, but I'll tell you, I don't feel like Kobe was ever the same after he came back from that, that Achilles injury. He was. I mean, he was in his mid thirties too when he had it. That's yeah, but different. but you but you know, you understand what I'm saying? Like it yeah. was it it's a tough injury to come back from, right? Uh, I thought there was a notable noticeable decline in his game after he came back, and he's he was he's one of those players that's just that good. So it still looks pretty good, even though he's he's still better than most, even after coming back from an injury like that. But Al Flanagan has age to Ike's point, right? He's still young and he has time. But it just there's that combined with the fact that he missed time at the at the beginning of the season. So just trying to get back into the flow. And this team established, you know, a flow without him. I think it's been difficult for him to just kind of fit within the flow of what they were doing that was working before him. And now he's, he's back in there and he's playing significant minutes and I know he's putting in the work. He's definitely putting in the work. I can see it. I just hope it comes together by sec tournament time. Right. Yeah. Because if he's going to play like that and those other guys are going to step their game up, we're going to be really difficult to beat. We were hard sure. to beat before he came back. But if, if if old Flanny is gonna play like the all SEC performer, good luck playing Auburn. And I put I mean, Main Easy owns Alan Flanagan an apology. <laughs> Him and I joke about Flanagan <laughs> about his play. I was like, I, Flan, I, I, I keep saying he's close, he's close. Like he's gonna come back. He's close, he's close, right? Uh, and even in our Slack, we're like, eh, I don't know what's Flanagan doing out there with the ball, uh, but. Uh, I think I think he's I think he took a huge step forward yesterday in terms of his progression. So it was it, it was exciting to see. I mean the the bench outside. I know Window had a very quiet game. Um, he didn't shoot a lot, but I was very impressed with the bench production. Um, despite because he's usually accounted for much of what we do coming off the bench. So for him to have to our bench to do what they did, I was impressed by that. I liked the game Wendell Green played yesterday, though. Yeah. He seemed like he was in pass first point guard mode. He had what six assists, five assists? Which one? I don't. I'm not looking at the statue right now. Five assists yesterday. Um, he was efficient. I'm not right. saying he wasn't, but yeah, super efficient. A lot of his shots didn't come from three feet behind the three point line, right? Like he was taking mid medium range shots. He was getting you know downhill, yeah. and he was looking to pass first, which made him even that more dangerous once he gets into the lane, because now, you know, if he's going to be pass first, when he gets into the lane, teams are going to start sinking back off of him. And that's going to make that mid mid range stuff uh, pop up even more for him. I liked the game that he played yesterday. It was good having Zep Jasper back because he was able to give Wendell an opportunity to take a little bit uh, off of the gas and not feel like he has to press and he's not playing as many minutes. Um, you know, Zep, didn't do a ton offensively yesterday, but he was efficient as well. Um, the sh you know, outside, we, we didn't have a point yesterday, and a, a lot of this is due to Texas A&M being absolutely awful, abysmal <laughs> shooting the ball yesterday. Like, it was yeah. bad. They were missing shots in the lane. They were Like, they could not buy a bucket. 
and some of them were good looks. Like they, it's not like we were just forcing them into bad looks often. Texas A&M right. was terrible yesterday. Um, but uh, I said that to say this is the closest I've seen to a consistent from top to bottom Auburn game where from the very first whistle or from the very first jump ball to the last whistle, it seemed as if you got the same energy and same um, impact on the game on both ends of the floor that you were getting the entire time. The offense still needs some work, right? Like we, you know, Texas A&M is not some great defensive squad and we had like 10 points in the first seven minutes of that game. Like it was terrible. Um, But I do think that, we are going, we're getting into a place. I saw a commitment early to try to get Jabari the ball, right? Like they um, were, we're going to try to work him out on the high post and figure out how to get him in, in the action a little bit earlier um, yesterday. So that was good. Um, just a lot of things, man. It, again, it's it shows that this coaching staff is not resting on their laurels. They are coming back and figuring new ways to be able to implement what they want to do offensively. They're running a lot of the same action, but they're running slight twists to it. And I love it. Uh, but yeah, to the point of Alan Flanagan, love what he's doing. Love what I saw out of Wendell Green yesterday. Uh, before we get to before we get to the giveaway, this is a great point by Ben Bloodworth. We didn't have that slump out of the half either. Um, that's something that we've that's kind right. of seen too. So um, that also that also was a biggie. Um, and shout out to Cambridge for just being a highlight, a, a walking yeah. highlight reel, reel. So yo, he was catching that junk. Every like he was it was like the the one he caught off the rim. It was a foul call. Right. So it didn't count. Mm -hmm. But that might have been the nastiest dunk out of all of them. Like the one where he took off from the SEC. Like if you go back and watch where he jumped from on the one on the fast break, there's like Mm -hmm. an SEC logo just outside of the restricted area where he jumped from. It's between the free throw line and like he jumped from a good ways back. It was it was a tough dunk. Because he he fell after he dunked it, yeah, and right. that's how far away he dunked it from with as much mm-hmm. momentum as he had going forward. That there was no way he was going to land on his feet. Yeah, that dunk was incredible. When he took off, I was like, he is not about to jump from there, and just completely yoked yoked it on him. His yoke game was on point yesterday. Yeah, he, he, he threw down this. quite a few. That the oop that he caught from uh, that Wendell threw from. I don't know how far back it was. Perfect uh, pass. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. It was a ama- it was a beautiful drawn up play. That was yeah, beautiful. It was about four feet outside the three point line on the opposite side, and he threw yeah. it to the to the far side of the rim, and it was just right there for him to catch and then dunk. Uh, th- those got that takes the chemistry, yeah, no, and for sure. trust and precision. So those guys are they're they're playing at a pretty high level as a team right now. When they get it going, I just man, I, I know we'll probably not be number one tomorrow, but I still think they made a case for why they should stay number one in spite of that overtime loss without our starting point guard. Yeah, you know, think about think about Zip Jasper coming back again. He did not affect the game from a scoring standpoint, but man, defensively we are a different looking team when he plays. Yeah. And I mean, again, and you, your, your, your Wendell's like those. He he has fresher legs late in the game. So if you need offensive production from him, you can get it because he's not gasping because he's been out there a long time. So right. he 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 provides so much value in terms of what he does, even if he doesn't score a lot. For sure. Giveaway time. Yes, you man. guys know what to do. Love. You know what to do. Wow. All right. Hashtag get your weight up in the comments if you want to win. How are we looking, Ike? 70 entries. Not bad. Yeah, it's all right. Not terrible. Not terrible. Happy Valentine's Day to everybody. It's tomorrow, but you know, Valentine's Day weekend for everybody, man. Um, go buy your, uh, someone you love a uh, town hoodie if you don't win it today or something. <laughs> Marketing holiday. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's get to the get aren't they down, all man. aren't they all Mike? Yeah, yeah. literally everyone. <laughs> all right, we're not gonna prolong it, man. Let's get to it. Let's see who's winning the Lob Town hoodie today. Today, see who's it gonna be? See y'all. See, all. <laughs> see are uh, you here though? That is the question. Where is C? C, hmm. we need to see you. Yeah, come on, bro. All right, Seahaw, make sure you make yourself known in the comments, and then uh, we can 
get you to, you know, you know what to do, but we'll still put it up on the screen. All right. Let's uh let's get to let's get to the preview. Let's look let's look to this week. Let's talk about Vandy. Mm. That's our next opponent. Mm-hmm. And that information is as follows here. We did used to do this for, for football. And I'll remove this guy here. So this upcoming Tuesday, we will be playing Vanderbilt. And I still have Auburn as number one because that's their ranking still. We'll see what that is. C Hall is, is here. You already knew you already know what to do. Business at the War Rapport. Business at the War Rapport. And size and address. Yes. Yes. Please do the necessary and congratulations, sir. Uh, we'll be playing Vanderbilt on Tuesday, February 15th. And that's a late game because I think it's a double header. I think LSU is playing somebody before us. And then we come on at 8 p.m. Central Time. That's the SEC network. Uh Auburn is has a 91% chance of winning, according to ESPN's basketball power index. Something about Vanderbilt, they're led by Scotty Pippen Jr. It's been there a while now. He's averaging 18.9 points per game, almost four assists. Vandy ranks fifth in the SEC, tied for 28th nationally in free throw attempts. Why is that significant? Because the teams ranked ahead of us haven't had at least one game against Auburn where they've kept it close. That's Alabama, Florida, Arkansas, and Georgia. So, Vanderbilt has done a pretty good job of getting to the line to help keep things close. And so that's something to keep uh, light of going into this game. They rank six in the SEC in turnovers force with 15 per game. Auburn actually leads the conference in turnovers with 11.7 turnovers per game. I did not know that until I researched that today. Uh, Auburn. Yeah, and ra- we, somebody just said in the comments, this is the wrong date on here. We play on the 16th, not the 15th. 16th. So it's Wednesday the 15th. So sorry. Thanks for that correction. So it's Wednesday the 16th. So they also, they rank, Vandy ranks ninth in the SEC in turnovers with 13.2 per game. So Auburn actually forces 15 turnovers per game. Auburn actually does a pretty decent job with that as well. So that's a little to know about Vandy. Our thoughts about Vandy going into this game. They've actually have gotten a lot healthier as the season has gone on. Um, They actually been playing teams a lot better over the past few games. They actually kept it pretty close with Tennessee both times they played. Actually, Mm. Um, they were in in it late. I think Tennessee went on a run and ended up pulling away from them um, on yesterday uh, on the road too, 64, 73. So I'm not expecting, I'm not, I will be surprised pleasantly surprised if Auburn uh, blows Vandy out out of the off the court but what are our thoughts about this game going into the next matchup how to avoid the slump man uh I asked coach Pearl in the um post game about offensive efficiency in the first half so while we did win by a bunch that was mostly because we held them to like under 30% from the field under 20%. They were terrible. Under, yeah. I think where did, where did we end? I don't I forgot where the, the final stats. Uh, score oh, yeah, I don't know did. where they ended the game. Yeah, so in the first like half though, they were under 20. Yeah, it was terrible. I mean, they couldn't buy a shot, but neither could we for a long time. A long 27%, stretch. 27%, 27%, 27% for yeah. the game. So, yeah. So we did not, we weren't playing great. Like that wasn't a great offensive performance for Auburn in terms of you know field goal percentage this is the third out of the last four games that we've been held under 40 percent from the field so there's definitely something to look at there and i'll be looking to see if they can kind of correct that you know trajectory because at the beginning of this season we were somewhere between 45 and 50 percent from the field and then we've had a stretch where we've been well under 40 and, and the shot selections have maybe not been great. Uh, I like when Wendell Green hits shots from Opelika, but man, like sometimes I feel like those shots, there's some better shots that he could take there. 
uh, when he's feeling himself. Uh, Bruce Pearl said he's got to take a look at it. So he's aware. He's aware that we, you know, against a better team, we might have gone down quite a bit in that first half, you know, if a team had got hot. And it, I don't, I'm not sure it's so, so much that, that we were, they were just missing shots. Texas, yeah. State, they were missing open shots. They did not pl- shoot well at all. Now, I know our defense is is really good, but from the perimeter, they had shots that if they had knocked down, that game could have been a lot more competitive or it would have looked a lot more competitive. So, you know, for me, it's just take a look at what we're doing, shot selection and how we're, you know, what what we're running because that first half didn't look great to me offensively. No, it was too- no, no, it wasn't. It wasn't. All right, your thoughts, man? Um, as far as Vandy is concerned, uh, it is one of those games that could be trap-ish. If it were away, I'd be more worried about it. Um, it being at home, not super worried about whether or not we'll be able to handle business in this one. Um, you know, uh, much ado about Scottie Pippen Jr. I think it's going to be difficult for one guy to dismantle this team, though. Right? Like he's going to have to. The reason why teams like Alabama and even you know, so we'll we'll credit you know, the teams that actually beat us, um, right? So like UConn and then now Arkansas, you you have to make the shots, right? Like you have to be a shot-making team. The reason why Bama is never out of striking distance with a team is because they have shot makers. They've got guys who they can – you they get two or three guys, you can just put the ball in their hand, they can go get a bucket, and they can get hot from three as a team and close the gap really quickly, right? If you're not making shots – Auburn is almost impossible to beat. You're not going to just be able to like out hustle us or, you know, defensively, you know, even if we're turning the ball over a lot, um, you, you've got to keep that up for a long stretch of time in a ball game to win, because eventually we're going to adjust and we're going to punch back. And when we do, we tend to punch a little harder than everybody else. Um, I don't know that Vandy's got that kind of firepower and I don't know that they have that kind of defense. Right. So, it's going to be a problem if they're not out there just making shots a la Ole Miss, you know, when we played them South Carolina earlier, if they're not making shots, it's going to get ugly. That's just the, the way it is. And if it's really just one dude, that dude's going to have to have a monstrous game. So, yeah, I don't see it happening. Got a question here from Antonio Smith. Question is Bruce holding Jabari Smith back for the SEC and NCAA tournament, or is that just how he plays what you guys thoughts i think that's just how he plays um he, his 10 yeah. man rotation thing is what he's doing and i just i just think that's just how he plays yeah i yeah, I, 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 I agree i think that's i think it's a thing i don't think he's holding him back necessarily um i do think that jabari smith is not like a high usage guy right like he's not going to just be a guy giving the ball and get out of the way very often uh, as talented as he is, it's, that's just not his game. Um, so, is that because he's not like a great ball handler? I think that part of it is ball handling. I think right. part of it is just, um, you know, he again, he he. Now, I, I've been talking about this for a while. He passed better out of the double team yesterday. He passed better out of the high post when he got the ball, looking to get the ball to somebody else. Uh, he he did that a lot more quickly and more decisively. Um, but yeah, I think a portion of it is his ball handling skills. If he were a better ball handler, he probably would just try to go to that bag a little bit more, but, um, you don't have to be a great ball handler to be a great one-on-one offensive player. Uh, sure. and he just needs to figure out, uh, he, I think the, he was when talking with Jay Billis on the little special thing that they did where they were riding on the little things, mm-hmm. whatever, whatever he was talking about how Bruce Pearl didn't really like the 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 over-the-left-shoulder turnaround, you know, situation that Jabari would go to until he saw he was making it more often. Um, I think that he knows that's his shot, but, like, think think back over the last three games where he hasn't had a ton of points. How often have you seen him shoot that shot? Not like he he does the one-foot fadeaway situation with, you know, that Dirk popularized. He's done that a few times, but he hasn't. If this is your shot – figure out a way to get to it. And that's where right. I think he's got he, that the, the evolution. Listen, everybody knew Jordan was going to the fadeaway. They knew it. It doesn't matter if you know you're going to do it. I know how to get to it. 
I know how to set it up properly. If that's your shot, figure out how to get to that shot more often and get into a place where you're comfortable. If you're a catch the ball face up, if he's playing off of me, I'm just going to rise up and shoot it. If he's playing me tight, I'm going to swing through one step, get him off balance, shoot it. Go to that over and over and over again. I just don't think that. I think he he thinks to himself, oh, I got to do something different. They know what I'm about to do. Make them prove, <laughs> make them prove they can stop what you know you're going to be able to do before you have to go to something else. And I just don't think he does that enough. Um, so I think it's just a mixed bag of because he knows he doesn't have to be that guy. He's right. not out there looking to be that guy. And right. because the offense isn't running through him in that way, there's no need to do it. Plus, there, that was a whole conversation, I think, with Jabari and his dad with Bruce Pearl to come to Auburn. It's like, look, I'm not going to wear you down before you get to the NBA. We're going right. to play you sparing minutes. We're not going to, you know, make you this focal point guy. If you want to go be that guy, go play somewhere else, right? You've got the talent to do that. That's not how we're going to play you here. And I think that they've made a commitment to save him in that respect um, and just let him figure it out on the next level, how to be a more selfish basketball player. Right. You know, what's great about that tactic too is, is that we're not asking an 18 year old to be the savior of your team. Yeah. Right. He's a talented guy, but listen, he can have an off night and his teammates have his back right. because we are not regularly putting pressure on him to carry the load offensively. We don't need him to go out there and put up 15 to 20 every night. He can score a quiet 10. Right. Play good defense and, you know, affect the game, you know, down the stretch if we need them. I mean, look at look at the Arkansas game. You know, he's got that ability where he can take over and just just, you know, be a basketball player and hit shots. But we're, I like that we're not regularly asking him to do that. Sure. Sure. You know, and, so. and again, it's, it's, it's going to help him transition better to the next level as well, because I already know how to play with guys like I already know how to play a role on the team. And the beauty of it, to your point, Mike G, is that we can just pick and roll teams at death with Wendell and, and Walker Kessler. Like we have multiple ways of attacking teams to where we it doesn't have to be Jabari or bust. So Jabari oftentimes finds himself in the offense because teams are so busy worrying about other things, even though you know Jabari's there. We can attack you in so many different ways. So Jabari can have a quiet 15, can have a quiet 16 points because Wendell is going off or KD is driving to the basket. You know, so I, I like the fact that that we have again different many ways of attacking teams and to Ike's point earlier. It's like the coaching staff is tinkering with ways to get guys involved and giving people something to think about down the road as we get into the tournament. So uh, I, I, I like I like what we're doing, but I don't think he's holding them back. I, I think a lot of ways Jabbar is just learning how to play when he doesn't have the ball in his hands. Mm -hmm. So, and I think that's what's going to help him to the next level as well. All right. You guys don't have anything else. I mean, I think we all pretty much expect Auburn to win against Vandy. No need to do a prediction there. Uh, shall we get to the last part? Yeah. Super Bowl version of. What did we see? Uh, yeah. Um, mine observation with the super bowl is joe burrow is having a hell of a playing career like this yeah. is an amazing he what was it just three years ago he just won the heisman trophy and won the natty and now he's playing in a super bowl with a team that for the most part has largely been non-existent in the playoffs this guy's having a tremendous career. He's having a very good career. Despite what happens today uh, in the Super Bowl, he may win it. He may pull it out. But he's having an, an amazing career to be able to win or have the opportunity to win a Super Bowl and a national championship in a three. Has anyone ever done that? I think this is the first time. Yeah, I think Wait. I've seen some people talk about Has about, anyone like, ever won a national championship and a Super Bowl in a th in in a 3-year span or less? Oh, yeah, I don't think that's ever been done. 
Now, I, I, think, that, I, I think he's going to literally be the first quarterback to ever win the Heisman, Heisman. Trophy, mm-hmm. the, uh, the national championship, and a Super Bowl in his career, uh, his if, career. He, if he wins. Yeah. So yeah. this this is this is why I think this is just amazing to me to be able to achieve that feat in such a short span of time. Um, regardless of who you're going for, that's impressive to me. I always felt like he had what it take to be successful at the next level, but for him to be doing it with a team that, again, for the most part has under, I don't want to say underachieved, but has not been much in the picture with teams like Pittsburgh in the way, uh, though that in that division they play in, Cincinnati hasn't been a huge factor. They've had some decent seasons in the past, but have never been able to get over the hump. And to be able to do it with Jer- Joe Burrow in a shorter period period of time has been nothing short of impressive. So he's he's if he stays healthy, I'm telling you, he's going to go down as one of the greatest to ever do it. Now, yeah. I was I was a big Joe Burrow fan in college, and I tried to explain to everybody how good a quarterback he was in college. And all I heard was look at the talent around him. Look at the tabs like, no man, you have to watch this guy play the game because their offensive line was just a little bit better than trash in 2019. LSU's was, they were not great in pass protection. They gave up a hell of sacks on him and he was definitely running for his life at points. Now it helps having, you know, Justin, uh, not Justin Jefferson, Justin Jefferson? Yeah, I mean, Jefferson, Chase. Yeah, yeah, all yeah the, Chase the whole... and, and all those those guys. It helps having Moss, all those guys. tight end. But, yeah. man, let me tell you, he made their life super easy. And I don't think that Jamar Chase is having the kind of season he's having if he's not playing with Joe, Joe Burrow. I think that Joe Burrow made those receivers as much as they helped him. So, uh, look at his rookie season, man. He was he – was, he threw – for a lot of yards and touchdowns for a rookie before he got hurt. And now in year two, he's just, he's a smart guy. Like he reminds me, uh, uh, he's like a better version of Peyton Manning to me with a much better arm. And so I, 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 I'm pulling for him. This is, these are two sec guys going against each other for a super bowl. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's really hard for me not to pull for Joe Burrow. It's really hard for me not to pull for him. Uh, we, we had a, we had a, a great question here, which actually leads to one of our show sponsors. Uh, Mike G, is that a gummy you just popped, sir? Oh, no, <laughs> not as much as I've been popping. God, I hope not. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, no, speaking, no, no, speaking no. of which, let's, let's talk about what, what particular gummies that he's asking about. Shout out to Rogue Shop. This segment of the War Report is brought to you in part by RogueShop.com. If you're in need of high-quality, all-natural herbs and extracts that contribute to a happy, healthy lifestyle, the Rogue Shop is the place for you. With a variety of products that contribute to a healthy sleep, lower stress, and a happy mood, the Rogue Shop has you covered. Visit them at theroqueshop.com and use code REPORT today. Tell them the War Report sent you. Hey, shout out to Rogue Shop. Uh, Go over and visit them, rogueshop.com. Uh, use code report. That's how they know that you came over from us. Lots of great stuff there, all natural, and they'll ship it directly to you. I just read Ike's. Uh, what did we see? Hilarious. Speaking of which, Ike, what's what's your what did we see, sir? Uh, let's see here. The Niners should be there. Screw <laughs> <laughs> Bit. Oh man. Is that, oh, is that is that is that bitter? See how this gummy tastes. Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah, bitter. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I forgot there was a game. Was there today, was, was there a controversial call in the NFC Championship game? Was there controversy mired uh, in that? Not really. I mean, we we screwed ourselves in that game by not. I mean, the game went down to the wire, though, for sure. Yeah, because mm-hmm. did it go to overtime or was it one of the uh, regulation? I think, regulation. Yeah, I, I, I think it was the AFC it. that went to overtime, but I think I yeah. think y'all's game was real close too. So it was. We we lost on the last second field goal. <clears throat> yeah. Whatever. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's tough. Yeah. I, I won't be watching. So whatever happens, it it just happens. So. Good for them. This is a regular thing for Ike, by the way. When yeah. he doesn't give an F, he does. He really doesn't. He will not watch. And He's on. It was, it's consistent. Yeah, he did that. He did, the, he did that with the SEC championship. He did. He done I that, will yeah. not watch a single down of the SEC championship. I will probably not watch a single down of the Super Bowl. 
So what you gonna be doing? Um, just just curious. Just sleep. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just wondering. Just wondering how you you know. How you, I work. I work on some 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 video content for y'all for the War Report while they're hey. watching. Super Bowl. There you go. Well, maybe you can check out the halftime uh, show. Uh, according to Antonio Smith, you got Dre, Snoop, M, Mary J, and Kendrick. Right? You don't care anything about that either. All righty, All right. and yeah. Video hey, content for the war report is right. Hey guys, let me know when the commercials are on. <laughs> yeah, I, maybe, maybe I'll maybe I'll watch it later. That's what YouTube is for, right? Yeah, it comes yeah, in on the commercials. Say, <laughs> it's commercial I'll, break. I'll, I'll YouTube the the halftime later or something. <laughs> All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, they don't need hilarious. my one extra view. They're good. Mm, okay. Well, yeah. I see. What, okay. I see. I see. I see uh, what you. Okay. What's going on there? Uh, my G. What's uh what's your what's your what did we see, sir? Uh, you know, for me, it's how long how long have the Bengals been bad, right? Like, or just every every year this is the year. And the yeah, way they that, haven't been since they lost to um what was that team they lost the Super Bowl to last? The 49ers. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Uh, <laughs> they uh <laughs> they this is this is what the system is supposed to do for bad teams, right? Is is that if you are terrible, you get high draft picks, and hopefully you find that foundational player that eventually helps get you to the top. A lot of teams still mess that up. It's still a tough calculus trying to project even how a number one pick will do. So, I uh, you know there there were uh, which team was it that had. Uh, I think it was the Bengals. Like they had a a long stretch of like taking wide receivers or something. No, it's the Raiders. The Raiders, yeah, right. <laughs> yes. And people were like, "Y'all need mm. like literally anything else," yeah. and they just kept taking wide receivers. So you know they got. I mean, it's I'm not giving them a ton of credit for selecting a Heisman Trophy winner as the first overall pick, right? I think Joe Burrow sure. was the obvious pick there, but it's just kind of cool to see over the course of a couple of drafts. You know, you pick up. You know Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase, and now your team looks completely different. You know one guy that impacts from the quarterback uh, position, and then another guy that gives that is his go-to, and then everybody around them looks better because now people are trying to key in on Jamar Chase to try to stop him, and the other receivers are you can't who you double. Joe Burrow is going to find the open guy. Now the run right. game starts to look a little better. Joe Mixon is getting in the mix, and, and, and this team looks formidable all of a sudden. And because they were the Bengals, not a lot of people expected much of them in these playoffs, even though they played pretty well up until this point and showed potential. But I always felt like they could make a deep run and look at them in the Super Bowl. And look who they had to beat to get there. They had to take down your guy, Patrick Mahomes, to get there. So this is uh, this is a significant accomplishment for them. I'm just glad to see like the whole like the draft system work to create parity and bring teams that are at the bottom to the top. Because um, I don't think it was Mahomes that he beat to get there. I, the, the AFC Championship was the Bills versus the Bengals, wasn't it? No, it was it was a KC Kansas. It was KC. Okay, right. Yeah. yeah, right. So the Bills and the Chiefs played each other in a divisional round. Yes, and th that game was pretty was 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 tough yes. was tough as well too, man. I mean, it was this was one of the most entertaining NFL playoffs I've ever watched. So, uh, you know, look at the Bills. The Bills are up there in the conversation. Josh Allen is a great quarter. I didn't I didn't think that he would be that great of a quarterback. But again, that's the calculus that these teams have to make during the draft in projecting talent. And yeah, he has turned into you know a top ten NFL quarterback. So, you know, having a top 10 NFL quarterback on your team seems like a requisite these days to being able to make a deep playoff run or make the Super Bowl. And, you know, the teams with the dynamic talent are doing it. So hats off. Uh, you know, it's just good to see that system finally create some parity and bring some teams to the top rather than us having to watch, you know, Rodgers and Brady again. You know, love Tom Brady, but I think this is a better Super Bowl matchup that we got than what we would have gotten otherwise in a lot of years. We got some talent. We got some, you know, with, with, with Brady moving on, we got some talented QBs coming up through the ranks, man. Mm -hmm. um, 
What, what what do you make about Stafford? This is an SEC matchup. You mentioned it before Ooh. we went on. So so how how you how you feeling? Uh, know, how you feeling, Mike? Uh, Ike, you can you know you can think about uh, what else what you're going to be doing when the game's not on. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. Like Stafford, he, you know, he's got a long history of just kind of like blowing it, right? Like, and, but he's a tough guy, and I've watched him win games injured and just put it all on the line for his team. He's got probably one of the most talented teams he's had around him in a while, you know, in his career. And this would be, I think, you know, how many good years does Stafford have left at quarterback, right? Like this is his. Hopefully this, the last, this is his last one. <laughs> this is his swan, swan song, right? Yeah. If he, I, I don't see them getting back as, as talented as their team is. It is it is a difficult road to navigate to a Super Bowl. Sure. This was, I mean, we were very close to seeing Brady play for it again. So I, I'm I'm iffy on Stafford on whether he's got what it takes to get this done. And I'm giving Burrow the edge here, man. Like in a Super Bowl, you want players to have that it factor. And I think that Joe Burrow can carry his team if need be. But I'm not sure I, Stafford needs other guys to step up for him and defense and, you know, a lot of things to go right, I think, for for, for them to win sometimes. So uh, Stafford versus Burrow is a compelling story for me you know two sec guys who have played at a high level you know against the best talent their entire careers they were battle tested before they got to the nfl and i see advantage of playing in our league right we're, we're producing guys who have played against the best of the best their whole lives even coming into the nfl and now you're doing it on a super bowl stage this is just it's such it's such a good accomplishment such a great accomplishment to even make it there right so I don't know. Uh, just just so I'm clear, just so we're all clear here. Um, Ike, you don't care about this game, right? <laughs> yeah. Got it. No, I'm picking no. the Bengals. I'm picking no. the Bengals, by the way. No interest whatsoever. I'm picking the Bengals. Go winner. <laughs> no. And CJ and CJ use them a place for the Bengals, man. I got to yeah. root for the guys, man. I got to root yeah, for the Yeah, Ike. Nothing. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. Nothing. Yeah. Yeah. For CJ. nothing? Uh, he's hurt. He's not even going to play. Whatever. Uh, is he not? I think he's yeah, gonna play. He, he is injured. He is yeah, he's injured. injured. He's not even gonna play. I mean, he's still. I, I saw. I saw yeah. it on the ticker of ESPN a few days ago. But yeah, okay. he's he's out for the game. But still, the Auburn guys and in the Super Bowl. So yeah, congrats. <laughs> Mike, take us out. <laughs> Petty ass. <laughs> Petty ass. Hey, listen, come a, come a patron. Got uh, Ike. You know, it, it costs money to keep Ike this petty. Oh, we want to help keep Ike petty. $5.99 a month. Hit that join button. Uh, become a member of our community. You guys, this is a great way to support our content. You know the deal. Uh, you know, we are again full time or part time content creators working full time hours. And so we're trying to get to full time on both ends. You guys can help us get there. Also, we can help the Lee County Humane Society in their mission to save a lot of puppies. So you can find the link to this in the about section of our YouTube channel. Head on over there. 50 cents on every dollar donated goes to them to help them save all the puppies. Uh, congratulations to our raffle winner. If you did not win the raffle, you can just buy something. It's cool. This is a great way to support us and get something tangible in return that you can touch and feel. This Egyptian cotton hoodie get get you one. Uh, Lobtown hoodies are flying off the rack right now. Appreciate everybody who's been buying those and posting the pictures on social media. Last but not least, guys, we're on podcasts. Uh, check us out on every single podcast platform. We're putting out more content there, and uh, you know we are looking forward to climbing in that arena too. The, the War Report is exploring some opportunities to help us grow in some unconventional uh, means. So outside of YouTube, we're looking at growth. Podcast is one of them. Uh, please go over there and support as well. Uh, uh, last but not least, shout out to our title sponsor, University Ace Hardware. Go check them out at 2101 East University Drive in Auburn, Alabama, over by the movie theater. Uh, they've been on with us since before the season started. Uh, our guy David over there has been a great sponsor and a wonderful supporter of our content. So we're looking forward to a continued and long relationship with them. You're muted, Caesar. Appreciate that. Guys, we want to thank you for hanging out with us on a Sunday. Uh, and if you're watching live or on replay, do us a favor, guys. Share this video on your social media. Please use hashtag get your weight up. Get the thumbs up. Like this video. 
Saw some new faces uh, watching with us and commenting. Thanks for that. If you're new to the channel and haven't subscribed, please hit subscribe so that you can be alerted. Hit the notification bell when we go live. We've been going live a lot outside of Sunday and Wednesday. Um, maybe the news slows down. Maybe it doesn't. But uh, we do need a new OC. So when that happens, we'll go live and alert you guys. So, you know, hit that, hit that subscribe notification bell. We can be who you hang out and give your thoughts, and we can let give you our thoughts on that as well. Guys, interact with us on social media, IG, Twitter, Facebook, at The War Rapport. We are at TW Rapport on TikTok. Guys, enjoy the rest of your weekend. Have a great week. We will see you on Wednesday. And as always, we're you.